Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run of the Zero Hour Heroic Mission, which the, the Heroic version gives you the catalyst for the Outbreak Perfected, which you will get from running this mission on normal. Now, as most people will know, there's a glitch in the actual mission, which means the ads go down as fast as they do on patrol. Perfect time now for anybody that needs to do the catalyst, which... Catalyst, you have to beat the, the mission on Heroic, and you've also got a series of codes that you put in during it. That gets you a ship, but it also gives you more Catalyst progress. So do this on each burn. There's a different burn each week. Do it three times. You will have the Catalyst, which makes the Outbreak Perfected a pretty efficient weapon. So I'm doing this on someone else's account because I don't actually have the mission because I've, I've done it. So you can't do it once you've done it. So I'm doing this on a, a clan member's account, I'm doing it on the Warlock. I've chose weapons that will help, even though the ads go down really, really easily. If I run out of heavy, the Jotun acts like a heavy. It's very, very powerful video incoming on that weapon, to be fair. I normally do this on a Titan or a Hunter, but I have done it on the Warlock. The Warlock has some really good attributes, very good for precision jumping. So let's hop into the mission. So when you get in here, all the ads are going to go down easily. You'll notice I'm going to use my energy weapon first. That is to, because I've come in with full energy ammo. I want one free slot on the energy ammo. I want to use one of the ammo so that when I run over special ammo, it will overfill my 21% my delivery. It won't do that if I've got full ammo. And that means you go into the next section with 200 rounds instead of 100. So as you can see, there's no real strategy, just make sure you kill everything quickly. And before you move forward, run into this left corner and pick up this transponder. By picking that up, everybody in the fire team needs to pick that up. By picking that up, now you can do the codes. Which gives you more progress towards the catalyst. And the exact same time you finish the catalyst, you will get the exotic ship that's linked to this mission. When I come into this next area, I focus on the shank bottom left. Take out these three snipers first. Just make sure tra traversing this area a lot easier. And as you can see, they go down so quickly. Then there's three sets of arc shanks. So you can see we took the first set out when we were shooting at the shooting at the shank in the bottom left. Second section was just round to the right. Third section was in between what used to be uh, the postmaster and the vault. And then take the other shanks out. Very easy to take these ads out. It's very difficult to commentate. And very diff diff difficult to come up with a strategy for this. Because everything just kind of falls over. I've got a scout rifle. Because there are quite a few ranged enemies. As you can see here. So they, they go down with each. Each enemy goes down with just a single headshot. Now this is the stock Nameless Midnight. It's the year one version with explosive rounds. I just bought it from collection. So I had a long range weapon. And then when you get into the. When you've clear them and you're going after the the servers as you'll see they just fall over so what i would suggest is pri priori prioritize if i can even say the word prioritize the invisibles here because even though they do fall over they still hurt when they shoot you so they don't do less damage than they used to do they just take massive damage which is why it's worthwhile trying to do this mission before this if you haven't got the catalyst and you haven't got the ship it's worthwhile trying to do this now so take out the two servitors, which is ridiculous how easy they go down. Now, what I'm doing here, you see a couple of explosions there. What I done there was, when I broke the first leg, I started shooting at the other legs. Because before his kind of head comes forward and he shows a crit point, you can still break other legs, which will do more damage. So now I'm going to switch to the rose. I'm switching to the rose because it's a lightweight weapon. It gives me more mobility especially for the jumping section. Nova Bomb for these ads, just to clear them out quickly. You've got three smaller ads here. As you can see, I'm just kind of feathering the 21%, using it like a pulse rifle, just to conserve ammunition. One Jotun shot on, on the shank, and now we're into the jumping puzzle. Got this little section to run through first before we actually get to the jumping puzzle. But the jumping puzzle for Heroic, is it, to start with, is completely different, because you've got to go through this kind of new section which is where the three key cards are that you need for for basically to do the codes so clear out these enemies just trying to get some heavy which is why i'm using a primary just to drop some heavy you guys know that i'm a big advocate for if you want a weapon type a weapon 
uh, an ammunition type, use a different type of weapon and you stand a higher chance of dropping. As you can see there, I did drop a couple of bricks of heavy. Now, when we get out to the jumping puzzle section, where we would normally drop down to our left and go underneath the ship, heroic, you're going to go right and go in an air duct. Remember that, because a lot of people will run about this hangar area trying to find out where to go, but I'm, I'm going to be honest, I think pretty much everybody, most people are going to know exactly where to go. There are exactly the same on as as normal. There's a there are po points where you can activate platforms for anybody in your fire team if you're in front and you can make the jumps. So when you drop down here, the first key card is going to be when you when you go here, turn round, duck down, and go underneath. Shoot this vent out and just when you get into here, just run straight across this opening. You won't drop down. This is the first key card. Only one person in the fire team needs to collect the key cards for everybody to get them. So when you go into this air duct, turn left and you want to drop down, it's the left corner as you're facing. And just kind of glide into this, this kind of opening. Activate the switch which opens up the the, the kind of, it's kind of a hole in the, it, I don't really know what it is, it just, it just opens up the path, the, it's the correct path to go. So when you come out, you jump across, jump up on this lid, and then you're going to jump up. It's kind of like a tunnel that goes up into the you know, platforms, little, little kind of ledges in a tunnel that take you up. And this is the correct way to go. When you get out here, there is a couple of jumps that are not really, really difficult. And they're just kind of, I think there's four platforms, and you go in into a, an opening to the left on the last platform. There's also a switch that will bring out platforms which join these two kind of ledges together it makes it easier for your fire team there it is there you've seen the red light just just on this platform and then when you drop down here the second key card is here you go over to the right and once you jump over this little kind of fence duck down and go underneath the next one is just in here this is the green one like i've said before only one person needs to collect these and the whole fire team anybody in the fire team will get them now we're moving on to the part of the jumping puzzle that maybe stops a lot of people from getting decent times on this. Now we've got to go outside. So basically, you want to glide into these kind of openings. There are two. And then once you get to the second one, boost up here to this platform and straight away jump to this, these pipes. Straight away jump to this and then straight away jump again. Try not to stop between those jumps. Now when you jump round the corner and you land on here, these platforms will appear. Depending on how quickly you've made the first jumps, depends on whether they're out or not. If you've made the jumps pretty quickly, when you land on that platform, when you've got to jump around the corner to the, the left, those platforms will be there for you. If you haven't, you'll have to wait for them and just wait there till they come out. Now we've got the third and final key card. That's it. You've collected all the key cards. Now you just have to make it through the rest of the jumping puzzle to get to the Cryptox kind of hole. And, and that's where we do the code. So when you get to this part, just do a single jump boost. And what I sometimes do, if I think I'm going too quickly, when you come down there, do a single jump, then boost. But as you're boosting, turn around and face the direction you came to stop yourself from going into the wall because that part can get you killed. Now we're at the fans. Everybody's favorite part of Zero Hour. Now we're back to the normal jumping puzzle. So you kind of got to jump into these grooves in the wall, which will allow you to slide past the blades. You'll see what I'm doing. I'm jumping in, and as I'm jumping, I'm turning round. But as you turn round, you have to change from left stick forward to left stick back, so that you're pushing your character into the wall. And as you're turning, you're keeping your character against the wall. So you're not keeping forward because you'll just glide forward into the the, the blades when you when you actually turn. Now, as you can see, the, this isn't really that difficult, especially on the Warlock. You can use the Warlock's glide to really precision jump onto those platforms. And when you get to the bottom, you might have seen briefly, there's a switch that you can pull that will bring out platforms that will make it easier for your fire team to actually follow you. Now, we've arrived at Trevor. Now, when you get to this point, wait for Trevor to pass underneath you. And we're going to go left. So drop down behind him and go left. Now, there are these switches. 
Now, a couple of things I've I never said in any of my other runs. If you remember the fire team, because this is a solo run and it's for people who want to try this solo. If you if you are with a fire team and you you're still struggling to do it, if the fire team are if your teammates are too far behind you at this point, too far behind, the switches will reset. And because someone's already came in here, you can't actually that this this uh, this pattern that I'm running might not work because you're not entering the maze at the same point. You know, Trevor's already been activated. So when you're running up these kind of corridors, they're a little, as you might have just seen there, there are little kind of alcoves in the wall uh, on ground level that you can get in. Make sure, especially if there's electric, those electric walls are up to stop you going forward, make sure you're at one of those holes in the wall. Ground level, it's like, like a little, little, little cubby hole at your feet that you can get in and allow Trevor to go past you. Don't wait out in the open. And you can see here, I'm changing my jump now to the fast boost jump. This gives me a forward momentum boost as I jump, which will make me faster in the Cryptarch hole. That is the key. Now, if you're, if, 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 you're, if you're not really quick at changing this kind of stuff, there's no worries. You can do this stuff on the left when you get out of Trevor's room. So... Once we've activated all four, you just run out of the room, get onto the left. And really, this is the this is the part of the video. All of this stuff is just, even if you weren't doing the codes, you were just going to do heroic, you actually can afford yourself a couple of deaths because you can clear the boss room in a minute or two. This is the part we needed to go quick on. We needed as much time as possible when we get to the cold room. So as you can see now, I'm looking up because I want to... These lifts will only go up so far and then they'll drop back down. So when it, you see the last kind of... It going up to its last point, jump off the lift, shoot that, and then you're sliding down here. When, when you're sliding down here, you can do little jumps to stop yourself. I don't really do it because I'm used to... I'm used to when I need to jump off to minimise time and stuff, but you can just do a little little hop jumps to bang your head off the ceiling, and that will minimise your fall damage. Now in this next section, there is a tiled section of the floor that you have to follow a specific route based on the burn of that week. So this is arc burn, so I need to follow that route in the centre. This is the floor plan for each burn. You need to follow the route perfectly. Because if you step off that at any point, you'll get burnt and you'll just die and it'll waste time. As soon as you do the floor plan, as soon as you follow the route for the designated burn, as soon as you come off there, there is a switch round to the left that you can deactivate this floor plan for anybody following you. So only the first person crossing this needs to do it. Once you've done that, this is where really the difficult part of this quest is, which is activating the consoles and putting the codes in. This is console number one. There is a console bottom left, which we will pass in a second, which is console number two. Once you activate these consoles, and you will see as we're running past, each of the rooms off to the side light up. So as you can see, this is lit up with cyan lights. That's what they call this color, cyan. You run to where the code designates you to go to, put it in on the right console, and come back. When you come back, the dials will have changed, there'll be a new code. You go and put that in to the relevant room and console number. You can see this is yellow, the little yellow lights above there. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at this room without having to put codes in. So this is the Cryptox Hall. It looks a little bit different because I'm recording this section on PC. When you come in here, there are set, you activate this console number one, which is a console top left that we're going to have a look at in a minute. That will then cause all the rooms to light up. This is console one. Bottom left, this is top left. Bottom right is console two, which I'll show you at the end of this clip. Once you activate this, those little yellow lights that are spinning around, they will fix on our position. That designates numbers. If you if you look at them like clock faces, and we'll have a little bit, we'll have a look at them more in depth in a second. But what that does is it activates all these rooms. These seven rooms, there's three on the right and four on the left, and they go as follow. Top left is green room. 
then white, yellow, then red, cyan, blue, purple. So, and they are des they, you know which room it is because the lights above the consoles light up with the glow of, of designating which room that is. Inside each room there are seven consoles. Now they are the same pattern in every room. So it's back right is one, front right is two, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is a diagram that kind of shows you what the main hall looks like with all the different coloured rooms and the locations. Console 1 and Console 2 are the only two consoles you worry about. And that middle part is the location of all the terminals within each room. All the rooms look the same. The only difference is they've got different colours, obviously. So the, the consoles are how you actually know where, which code to put in which room, which room you're supposed to go to. So when you first come into the hall, you'll come and access Console 1. That will light everything up and it will give you a code that you have to read. Now, this is what the codes look like. I've numbered these dials to make it easier for you to read them. Because you're going to have to do this quickly. So that you read left dial first, right dial second. So this code would be 911. Using the charts that I've put on the video, that will tell you for which week it is, which code that is, which room and terminal number you have to go to. Now, there are some for each week that have different start-off codes. So you would read these dials and say it was 911. You would look down the chart and two rooms might start with the code 911. That's when console 2 comes in. Because the code for each room on console 2 will be different. So if you have two rooms that start with that code, you then have to go to console 2. Normally, you just have to read the first dial. But it's worthwhile scanning over the, the, the charts just to make sure. Do your prep. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. So I would screenshot all of these charts so that you know. This is console 2 and you would come down and you would read this. And these are what the charts look like. So you can see here, there's the, the codes for terminal 1 and some of them are the starting codes for two rooms. So if it doesn't have a second code, the first code will tell you what room it is. If it has a second code, you need to go and read the second code. Now, what I kind of done when I was doing this is I had like a an editing page up on my, my monitor and I just basically had a paint app and I just scored the line out of... When it was double codes, I just scored the line out of the one I'd already done. So when that code came back up again, I knew exactly which one it was. But I would screenshot them and maybe have them and, you know, you, you could do... There's a number of different ways you could do it. I'm sure you guys can find a good way to do it. The first, the first chart was arc, second one was solar, and the last one was void. So I would screenshot them and make sure you've got the one that corresponds with the burn of that week. Now, as I've said, take an extra second just to make sure you've got the right code. Because inputting the wrong code, which I'd done in this run, I, I'd done it three or four times in this run, and I lost a bit of time. Luckily, because it's the glitch, it didn't really matter. I've got the lightweight weapon on so I can move around the hall really quickly. Uh, and as I've said, every correct code, and you'll see here, when you put correct codes in, it lights up and the code will change on the on term, console 1. It will be the next code. You get 15 seconds of time. If you concentrate on the time I've got on the screen, every time I put a correct code in, I get 15 seconds back. So, and the simple math is 7 consoles and 7, seven rooms, 49 codes. So... You've got to put in 49 codes. And you have to do this for the Catalyst, Arc, Solar, and Void Week. If you do that, and you follow the rest of the steps in this video, you'll not only get the full Catalyst, you'll also get the ship. There is a ship link to this, and you will see doing this gets you the ship. Uh, doing, doing these codes, the first time you do it, you'll get the ship, and you have to complete it each week to get them. Once... You, it's kind of hard to keep a track of what code you're on, what number you're on. But luckily, there is a ma there is quite a big audio cue when you've completed it. It's like a generator starting up. But the first time you do it, the catalyst will appear. I'm pretty sure something appears on your screen to tell you you've done each configuration of it. So when you're doing Arc Week, something will pop up to say 
you've done art week and on this on the monitor coming up real soon on the on the screen you'll see what it looks like when it comes up so once i think this is the last code once once you've once you've completed the codes and that comes up then you're going to go on to the boss i'm going to speak a little bit about what's going to happen at the boss the boss oh it's not the last one there must be another one the the boss is kind of different to the way we we normally do it as anybody that's checked the channel out knows i've done quite a few zero hour quest uh, missions uh solo guides kind of the way it works is the boss you'll put so much damage on the boss and then he'll he teleports he's got four other locations from the start so he goes from front to left to back to right and all the way back around the front but because they're taking so you know they, they are taking massive damage a lot more damage than they should they're really i'm gonna jump in i'm gonna put 21 percent on him and then he's gonna he's just gonna go through all these phases and come right back to the start but i'm gonna get all the ads all the ads are gonna come in at the same time so jump down put 21 percent delirium my my suggestion is take out all the snipers and the accolades first the 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 the, the dregs and the vandal sorry not the accolades not hive uh take them all out first as you can see that there we go all the codes have been done that's exactly what it looks like i think you have to beat this again on arkham and you change back to my scout rifle i think you've got to beat this mission again on this burn to register but that that's the last time you'll have to do it if you can do this run as one full run it's a one and done each week so when you drop down here we're going to use the scout rifle to take out all the smaller ads then i'm going to put 21 percent on him he is then going to absolutely run like like his life what well, his life does depend on it. he's going to go through all these phases which means you're going to get the two servers and the two tanks pretty immediately but because of how easily they go down it's no big problem so you see here i'm going to put big damage on him he runs away i'm just going to go straight to the server and then all all the all the all the shanks no problem at all drop down i see special i'm going to grab this special because it overfills my my machine gun i'll take these arc shanks out on the on this side i'm going to put a grenade on them which really messes them up and then i'm going to just do a little bit of damage see how i'm breaking more than one leg at a time on the tank i took that i dropped that tank so i could come over here without getting shot by that tank even though i'm moving you still don't want to any tank to give you know you be an easy target but i'm trying to take the shanks out on on the sides because this is kind of where i'm gonna fight from so i'm gonna put a grenade on on that second tank You've got invisibles, a lot going on here. So when you come in, take out the first cell, the f take out all the small ads, and then take out the, the server that drops where he is, and then take out the shanks on the on on the left of where we're facing. Now you can see this is why I put the Yotun on because the Yotun does so much damage in this instance. I'm not throwing my super because I'm saving my super for him. And I didn't take out any of the any of the turrets because you don't need to because we're not going up close. So we're just making sure that it's, there's just one ad up. Don't take all the ads at the back out because if you do, you'll get more ads. You want to keep one ad up. So we'll take this last guy out. Then we're going to hit him with the Nova, which kills him outright because he takes so much damage. And then I think we've got one more ad up. Nope, that's it done. And that's the full run. That's how you beat Zero Hour. That's how you get the Catalyst all in one run. I hope this helps you guys. Don't forget to screenshot all the relevant information. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck with your runs, guys. And I will see you guys in the next video.